This is the Almost Daily Zencast. Hello and namaste. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I am your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Let's get started. Hello and namaste, friends. Welcome back. Apologies to everybody who suffered through that last segment. I was uh, not awake yet. Good morning, Trumptopia. It's Saturday, March 21st, 622. Sorry, that's a lie. 612 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I am your eccentric, uh, wordy, and oftentimes... Um, uh, unintelligibly rambling host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Uh, And this show, as you may already know, lacks a co-host, which I'd like to introduce, which I don't have. Just putting that out there, still looking, someone to join me remotely, or even, crazy thought, in real life. But that takes some vetting and planning and, you know, scheduling. and I digress. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, it's, it's a weird, wild, crazy day. Uh, crazy time to be alive. Crazy set of circumstances that we find ourselves in. And I am coming at you with a serious question. This toilet paper shortage. This toilet paper shortage. Oh, uh, before I jump into that, I wanted to acknowledge something that I saw uh, earlier in the morning that I thought I wanted to, was going to find time to squeeze into the previous segment as I rambled on for 40 some odd minutes about um, the portrait work. Uh, selected the portraiture, the portraiture selected for uh, Kenny Rogers' um, obituary uh, in today's online news. And ironically, two things, two things I wanted to mention in that entire previous segment that I kept like not managing to get out. One, the entire time that I was fixating on that issue for whatever reason. I was constantly wanting to say Kenny Loggins, not Kenny Rogers, despite the fact that Kenny Rogers was right there in front of my face in every single headline. Uh, Second of all, my headline was pretty cool. Third of all, I don't know why I rambled on for so long about that, so I owe you guys an apology. I might try to make the effort, because I literally am finally just like, like the rest of us, Stuck here, there's nothing much better to do, uh, and coping with it. And, uh, get around to like fixing that. I'll just like take that episode down and replace it with a whole new recording, and maybe include some clips of me rambling about stuff, but from the original recording. But it, it, it's, I don't know what happened, I don't know what took over, but uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, that's the flaw of a truly unscripted, un, sometimes unplanned, uh, un, uh, unpartisan? I don't think that's right, but we just made it up. Unpartisan uh, show like mine, it, it may just go right off the rails and go you know, digging a ditch to nowhere. The final thing I wanted to call out, I think you all should look up the articles on this. And uh, support the artists beh- that are you know that are the cause behind this news, but the uh, there's um, there's the story going around as it is being variously reported in variously different uh, uh, outlets about how in Italy um, folks started hanging out, and this is why, if I may interrupt myself, this is precisely why. 
I have always, always, and forever loved balconies. Because uh, you can be safely, quote, in your own space, and also in a sort of open air, uh, shared public space, right? And in, in beautiful old country, old world cities, uh, like in Italy, uh, you, you get a bit of, you know, stronger sense of neighborhood, of belonging and of interacting with your community if and or when you spend quality time in your balconies. In New York, it's not as trendy, except in some of the older buildings, I've noticed. Obviously, the bigger, newer ones, there's a lot of the safety because it's a big, giant, tall skyscraper, tower situation. But those buildings, coulda, shoulda, woulda, and maybe some do, and I just don't know about it, coulda, shoulda, woulda, duplicated the the quasi-public shared space uh, environment through some sort of internal atrium up the center. But maybe that's too radical a design. I, I digress. My point is, people have always done this. It's not just something that happens because of pandemic world lockdown uh, protocols as we are currently coping with. Uh, and I'm sure that throughout history, in other times of great public stress, those same neighborhoods, because these are cities that are like, you know, a couple of hundred years old, etc. Th those same neighborhoods and those same places where community is strong and artists abound have had spontaneous, uh, you know, displays of art in this way, which is what I'm pointing to. Um, the article in particular that I saw this morning, as I was like groggily getting ready for my first uh, segment of the day, was uh, over, you can find on NBC, ooh, wow, that sounded oddly weird to my own ears. You can find over on NBCnews.com, uh, and it's a uh, it's a headline. It's headlined. Italy made its own entertainment on coronavirus lockdown. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a cool article. You should check it out. Go read it. But uh, that's why. That is why. Precisely, I have always fancied, loved, admired, adored balconies. Even just windows that open full bore and have a little rail so you can lean out a little. But true, like real, actual, with enough room for a chair and God forbid a whole nother table, balconies, big fan. Me, this guy, right here. The whole world, the world, anybody who lives in a house and currently, myself is included, I don't have a, a balcony like this, but it should be um, something that moving forward in, uh, in all areas of, uh, of architecture, we should rediscover, reinvestigate, re-explore, redeploy, uh, maybe even retrofit. Uh, ooh, that sounded funky too. Retrofit uh, existing buildings uh, that deserve it, you know, because of their beauty and landmarky status and whatnot, but still, you know, have a lack of balconies everywhere because they can provide a fun, uh, exciting, and delightful way to uh, remain grounded and connected in our own privacy, in our own safety, uh, but also out there. Uh, and relating with each other in the world with some uh, some built-in social distancing. Okay, balconies was not what we wanted to talk about today, was it? I'm just going off. Go find that article and read it. It's cool. And go watch, go support those uh, people by, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe watching a little bit of, of their actual content. Uh, 
on their social media and give them some some likes and loves and stuff. Uh, on my way towards to today's actual central theme, I did want to swing by over back to the uh, NPR tab and say something about the simple fact that the news has hit as of this morning um, that uh, someone, a woman, has volunteered to receive uh, experimental treatments in development and in phase one trial. Uh, So look for the article, quote, I want to do something, says a mother of two, uh, blah, blah, blah. She is the first to test. Now, it says treatment in the log line, but it says vaccine in the headline. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Those are two different things, and which one is it? And I haven't read the article, but I wanted to swing by and take a you know peek at it and also say, like, go check that out, because hats off to whoever bold person that is, right? For all the reasons, because, whoa, reasons. And you can find that on npr.org. So, yeah, cool thing, you know, headlines that you might have missed, that you might want to go check out. I'm going to set that one aside for myself to read later. Uh, There was something else. Oh, yeah. Fox News had the acting Homeland Security Secretary on talking about stuff and about how... uh, clarifying for the world that although international travel is being heavily tamped down um, we don't apparently have any plans to halt domestic travel put a pin in that for a hot second uh, while I shut down some tabs because I don't need all these tabs open and uh, oh headline alert I guess I could have, should have, would have made this an episode of news, breaking news. But uh, headline alert: there's a there's a a, a debunking uh, and calling out of misinformation and myths about how bats are not to blame for coronavirus. Okay, go check that article out over on CNN.com. It's about midway. There's a big coronavirus section. They also got a couple of other interesting articles, including a report, an expose about CVS maybe accidentally, maybe unpurposefully sending incorrect information about COVID-19 to its own staff. Also, shame on GameStop. Ugh, what an embarrassing sounding looking headline that it uh, it tried to declare itself an essential business womp, womp. its own employees are apparently uh, not too pleased for all the obvious reasons if we're gonna do if we're, I'm gonna stop and do that there's also a shame on this other guy as reported on Fox News on the internet foxnews.com Um, someone somewhere, some American, some, I dare say it, Trumptopian, because he has that look. They have a picture, but he's not identified. Uh, But apparently has been fibbing about having caught and gotten a real diagnosis of being sick with COVID-19 in order to get paid sick leave. And they may or may not have been law enforcement. Go check out that article and uh, let's try to hold ourselves to a better standard than that, folks. But uh, what was the thing? There was a thing I was trying to get to. Oh, right. Um, That too. Uh, I think I accidentally closed one too many headlines or one too many tabs. Oh, right. Really quick. Zooming back to this thing. I'll come back and I'll read this article on NPR and try to give you guys my opinion on that. 
And I know, I know, I know. Conspiracy theories, vaccines are fake, blah, blah, blah. I have a question for the, a burning, burning question that if I was in the real media, if I was really, uh, if I was actually trying to be a real journalist, instead of just having uh, fireside chit chats while I sip on tea with, um, with the world vis-a-vis -vis the internet, uh, I would be asking, I would be asking everyone that is a Republican that applauds and supports Trump, both, uh, in public life, you know, like politicians, and out there in a sort of like every man on the street, what's the deal with people claiming that Trump is an anti-vaxxer, but him literally on national TV, uh, on live feeds from Trump doing a live thing, uh, he said, you know, go get your vaccines, time to go get your vaccines, and that he's supposedly fighting big pharma to you know it for us the little guys to make things fairer and better uh and he supposedly you know is assuring us and guaranteeing us that tests are ready and we're still like to, to right now Saturday March 21st we're still lagging, like, people, are, there are places where people who are clearly in need of a diagnostic test are being denied and uh, because the provider, the healthcare provider, can't. There's no, they've run out. The whole testing situation, I have not ranted about that. I can, could, should, would have done that more intelligently in my previous segment. Um... Today, I want to come full circle and talk about the weirdest thing. Never mind the travel restrictions and how disruptive that is going to be to the economy. Purely from a people now can't go to do stuff that they normally typically do. Uh, But, uh, but also from a sort of, you know, feel safe and sane and uh, for people traveling, not being able to get home and then getting home being a clusterfuck is the worst thing you can offer uh, the, them as individuals for their sanity and for their well-being. And that's precisely what we've done. Um right on one at one level but i want to steam through straight to this toilet paper situation also i don't want to forget about that and ramble on for another 30 minutes and then be like oh right i was supposed to talk about toilet paper it caught my eye when i searched for i just typed in toilet paper okay uh in the search widget and uh The very first thing is an ad for eBay that reads toilet paper on eBay. Seriously, we have toilet paper. eBay.com. <laughs> like, <clears throat> the, the insanity level that we've gotten to with this crazy toilet paper situation is really quite wild. Uh, and before I talk any further about it, I want to say I want to say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna nip it all in the bud. Maybe just maybe y'all use way too much paper when you wipe. Maybe I don't know. I do know that there's a lot of shitty, flimsy, thin, not too very helpful, falls apart in your hands kind of toilet paper. Uh, and there's also like the super padded, super deluxe, luxurious that literally one square. Um, you know, could wipe an ass for a month. It's so luxurious, much paper. Uh, but uh, I'm going to pause and leave I, I, because I want to move forward and not talk about like that nasty bit of business. But y'all could probably learn 
to use a wee bit less paper with each, shall we say, wiping session. Just throwing it out there, okay? That's that's the first thing that came to mind when all of this news, when all of this toilet paper fiasco news bullshit hit the fan in my universe. Uh, but I have further thoughts. And I literally uh, made the, for the cover of today's episode, of this particular episode, I, I, I think I opened it with like, Pavlovian uh, social conditioning, anyone? Uh, and we're going to hit that up and talk about that in depth in just a bit after we take a bit of a music break. Because that's what I was supposed to do in the middle of the last segment, and I totally failed. But I'm on top of it now. So enjoy this. Uh, the future is here before. It's a DJ Z loopy loop hybrid trap 222 production. Uh, of EDM madness for your danceable, uh, wiggly bits uh, entertainment pleasure. DJ Zed's music is electronically produced using, uh, you know, the latest, most cutting edge of uh, music loop production apps, which um, I would endorse, but I don't remember the name of right off the top of my head right now. I'm a jerk. And also, you know, I'm supposed to not do endorsements, I think. I don't know. I'm still up in the air about how to interpret that. And quite frankly, it was such a marathon reading that I didn't really uh, form a clear memory of the parts that pertain to, you know, like, hey, how do I uh, appropriately include reference to incidental uh, other corporations' products, you know, that I use in my real world life that are part of my like audio blog as entertainment show about myself doing stuff and, you know, trying to get, trying to create a situation as if, as if I had a radio show on a, on a, on a radio station, right? You know, I don't, but as if I did. That's the way I want to I wanna RP this. And so, welcome back. Thanks for uh, that fresh track, DJ Zed. Uh, DJ Zed nods stoically in response to my statement and, uh, and says he'll be back in just a minute to make some more music to play for all you kind people. He doesn't really make it, he just sort of like weaves it together. So, uh, as the borders are shutting down, as uh, this thing builds into craziness, uh, I am curious to see that smack dab in the middle of the search results uh, page for having typed in just toilet paper, there's a, a, a search result that is a link to a Forbes article uh, Forbes.com, right? 
Forbes being primarily sort of like about the world of finance, if I'm not mistaken. And the headline reads, here's why the toilet paper shortage is only temporary. I want to read about how that's only temporary because everywhere we go, everywhere I've looked in real life for the past several days, there really literally is uh, just empty shelves. And at first, at first, when I, when I personally first saw people commenting and posting empty shelf pictures, I was dubious. Dubious. Because just days before, you know, just days earlier, I had been out and about in the world and there was no shortage of nothing. It was good old, keep on steaming, full steam ahead, Trumptopia, America, America, consumerism going on. I would like to note that my next search was for hemp toilet paper. And, uh, and I love that there's an article floating around uh, that can be found on intelligentliving.co. Hemp toilet paper could save the world. And uh, yeah, let's talk, about, let's talk about all of this really in depth for a hot second. There was not a toilet paper shortage, and then there was. And it's dragging on now for quite a bit. And what's funny and interesting was the toilet paper shortage happened first, and then global lockdown sort of eventually came about throughout the world. And uh, it it escalated pretty quickly. If there was ever a moment in history that deserves the, well, that escalated quickly meme, it's this toilet paper situation. Now, I don't know. I haven't seen anything. I haven't read anything that indicates that there's proof that this was a Pavlovian experiment. I'm just sitting back you know, as, uh, as, you know, uh, what's that old saying about, uh, armchair quarterbacks? I'm just sitting back in my comfy chair with my heating pad, uh, and in my comfy robe, looking at the world through my various screen devices filled with lightning and evil demon death. Uh, and, uh, I just like demon death as an alliteration. I don't actually literally mean that Although I would imagine that that is how it might work in a, you know, in a sci-fi steampunk world where uh, lightning and demons are what power, uh, you know, supercomputing, uh, then yeah, I guess, you know, they'd have to be sacrificing themselves to, to, to generate the sustained uh, energy for all this uh, information uh, bandwidth. But I digress. That's got neither nothing to do, neither here nor there. Uh, looking at this world and it's a and it's a apparent goings on, vis a vis social media, vis a vis traditional media, vis a vis the hybrid of internet news media, highly influenced by the social media movement and the social media phenom. And I'm trying to draw, formulate. Uh, and draw conclusions, right? Like I'm processing information. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to draw my own independent conclusions and not be spoon fed conclusions by any given source. Of course, I don't know. Am I failing? Am I totally brainwashed by some source? I don't understand where it's coming from. That it, that wouldn't be impossible, but I I don't. I highly suspect that it is not the case. Uh, then again, I also highly suspect many other things. Holy cow, uh, Mac, this 
like dynamic, if I may totally randomly sidebar, this dynamic, um, what are these called? Background uh, picture things. I've, I've kept one of the default D ones because it's just gorgeous. It's the one that's like an aerial photo uh, to like, you know, the very edge of some island, the very edge, the very end. It's sort of, it's a beautiful aerial photo from over the water onto one ridgy, peaky, pointy beginning of an island. You know, cinematic. And it adjusts according to the time of day. And it's obviously based on a time-lapse series of photographs of this same location, probably using uh, an accuracy pinpoint like GPS controlled uh, a drone that sat there and either zoomed out to the same exact location, you know, every other hour or just hovered there for a 24-hour period. But what's my point? It's constantly surprising me with its beauty and subtlety. And I'm like, did it just change in some way that I just never really realized it was doing? Um, Because that's, it's just looking gorgeous right now. And it's 6.42, 6.43. And it's doing like this dawn thing. And ah, ah, just effing gorgeous sitting back there in the background. My background, my computer desktop background picture. Um, literally just impressed me enough to ramble about. I digress. Going back. Toilet paper. What happened? What happened, Trumptopia? What happened, world? And am I being paranoid? Or does it feel a little bit like... Is it reasonable to say that I think if it isn't out there already as a conspiracy theory that it should be that I'm surprised that it's not that this toilet paper thing isn't being described as a psyop in and of itself uh, as a Pavlovian experimental test of (laughs) can we get them to like hoard and buy out toilet paper just by showing them a bunch of pictures of empty shelves where toilet paper should be on social media for a hot minute in the midst of all this fear-mongering super hype over what is essentially a super flu. I mean, it's not even, it isn't, I don't know, I don't think it's end of the world level yet. I think there's a lot of fear talk about it being end of the world level uh, because it's not, you know, it's it certainly isn't unwise to chit-chat about it, but and to speculate, right, uh, in all directions. But I ask you seriously to consider, might it not be what something that might have been part of what's going on? Um, fact, right? There are that, there are so many conspiracy theories about what COVID-19 is, quote-unquote, really, we just I just did an episode about it, right? So if you're new, welcome. Strap yourselves in. My show gets weirder. And feel free to hop around. I like to say that at least once every other couple episodes or two because, you know, I don't know when you're joining. And if you're new and you're listening to this for the very first time and this is the first episode you're listening to, you don't know. You haven't heard yet. Hop around. Go all the way back to the beginning of the show. Listen to those couple of first episodes. And then, you know, pick things that catch your eye. And then go back and backfill. It's all interconnected. And I ramble in a fun, spirally way where I'm not really just repeating myself. I'm going deeper in the rabbit hole, right? Okay, so... Where was I? All right. I already talked about that. I mean, my my opinion is that I don't think that it's necessary. Do we need to be closing the borders? Uh, I personally don't think that that, I think that sounds Machiavellian. Um, you know, it sounds creepy and weird. But, uh, you know, is it really going to help? I don't know. 
have I decided about... Well, we can talk about that. That's a whole other episode, right? Like, is that lady that volunteered that I talked about in the previous segment um, to be the first person to... And it, the wording was unclear whether it was actually a vaccine or actually, like, a, a curative treatment. Those are different things, right? I mean, unless I'm being too snobby about words. Um, but is she risking her life? Question mark. Uh, is she being hoodwinked by the evil? Is she being used? Is she being co-opted by the evil, nefarious uh, big pharma? Oh, a thing that I think is worth saying that I could have, should have, would have said earlier in the Good Morning Trumptopia segment, uh, which I will say now, is this. Um, one of the troublesome facts, because there's no denying what he has and has not done, one of the troublesome facts about our president's uh, reaction and handling of this this uh, uh, situation is that he's he's bluffed and bullshitted on his own, of his own accord, and he's also you know like blamed the media for hyping it up and making it a fear mongery thing, which is almost a fair thing to say. I mean, it is their job, right? Their job is to sell news and sensationalism sells news what do you want you build a toxic system you're going to get toxic products what do you want you build toxic politics you're going to attract toxic politicians what do you want <laughs> um oh it loads i loads i've said it before i'll say it again because every once in a while i have to like admit that he's not wrong or that i kind of can't disagree with a particular statement and it does, it gets at my ego and it pains me. Um, but uh, the one thing that he said that he's probably right about, uh, in the midst of all the crazy, outrageous things that he said that he's not right about, which should never be forgotten, is that indeed it will run its course no matter what we do. And then it will either lighten up and our bodies will begin to build immunities because that's, you know, in nature, that's how you do it, folks. <clears throat> you know? Before hospitals, before the invention of industrial manufacturing techniques and big pharma, even when it was still like medium pharma, we just had to like survive being sick. And I'm not saying let's be let's be cannibals, right? That's a bit of a of overreaction into what I'm overreading into what I'm saying. But what I am what I loathe to agree with him about is that he he does this all the time. He wraps up sensible kind of almost straightforward nonsense in with um sensible nonsense is stuff that's like almost Technically true, but but is being used in a nonsensical sense. Um, and uh, there was something he said that I like, ah, uh, I can't disagree with him about that. And it just sort of dropped right out of my head. Oh, that it would just play itself out and that maybe by April it'll be gone. The problem is... Uh, that he that he's also neglecting is that that's that's within the realm of possibility and definitely within the spectrum of potential outcomes that would be considered ideal or even better you know like preferred let's let's you know let it run its course uh, and do its thing and then you know we all build immunity and it peters out by springtime and then it's, you know, springtime for humanity in, uh, uh, on planet Earth. But germs are savvy, yo, believe it or not. Um, and if, you know, all things being fair and all, 
all conspiracy theories being set aside in large part because, as I pointed out in that segment, and I'll point out again for the purposes of drilling it into your skull, because this this has to go viral, folks. If if you go from zero conspiracy theories about a thing, like zero, none existed, to 30 in weird polemic pairs that disagree with each other, it's a, it's an evil plan to destroy China. It's an evil plan to destroy the United States. It's an evil plan to destroy Russia. <clears throat> then, okay, but there's also a different one citing different sources with a different ripple of nuanced uh, explanation in the middle that's like, oh, it's, it's an evil plan to destroy the world. But the, okay, great. But but if there's if there's a cacophony, that's a great word. If there is a cacophony of conspiracy theories about the same thing, and they're competing for your attention, and they all have in common us versus them, cultural conditioning, then it's very much likely that they're all a bunch of engineered bunk, right? And not actually authentic. Um, conspiracy theories uh, crafted by uh, a, a sincere, concerned, generic, normal, everyday citizen out there in the world. Give me those kinds of conspiracy theories. Don't give me this prefab, self-contradictory, us versus themist nonsense that's designed quite obviously, painfully to my eyes and ears, to get y'all to argue more than it is to bring light and understanding and truth to the world. Uh, But I digress. Toilet paper. What happened? How did I get to 42 minutes and 42 seconds without actually really getting to talk about the toilet paper at level that I did? Um, If there's one thing we walk away from this moment in history, folks is that we need to rethink how we do everything. And we should not let the moneyed interests dictate to us what those new systems are just because they are the moneyed interests. Um, We should organize through public discourse and civil organ civic organization, as I like to call it, um, and take you know real effort and real action to uh, to change the world through uh, you know uh, the community elevation of our understanding and our comprehension of stuff. Um, first of all, we have to ask. What is going on with the toilet paper, for reals? We have to really investigate. We can't just, you know, uh, what's the name of the emoji with the little person with their arms up and, you know, palms up with the weird, like, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck kind of, is that what the, I, that's what I would call that emoji if I was naming emojis. The what the fuck emoji? Um, you know, the one, the exasperated it's the one you throw up right before you put face palm, you know, uh, with the single face palm emoji. They go well together. Uh, we didn't need to have a run on toilet paper just now, I don't think. And you'll forgive me if that sounds judgy or entitled. I, I, I think I, and I'm not paranoid enough to 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 blatantly accuse the world system, the, the, the industry, if some sort of coordinated feigning of, you know, pretending to have a shortage. And plenty of other people have already, like, mocked and ridiculed those who could arguably be accused of having caused the shortage through their collective hoarding and over overbuying. And I'm not, you know, I'm not here to make fun of people. Uh, I am here to poke fun at what has happened, to poke fun at at uh, at things that are believed despite being false, 
and ask questions that might poke fun at us all. But, uh, so we need to redesign the way the world works because A, it's toxic, and B, it's fragile AF, and we can suddenly find ourselves without essential products way too easily. And B, we need to always keep our guard up and never take things for granted and ask deep questions and be suspicious because, oh, I don't know, industries have a track record of being assholes. Nine out of ten doctors agree smoking cigarettes is healthy for you. And that's not that long ago that they used to peddle that kind of bullshit, right? Trust me, take it from someone who uh, lived the hypocrisy of ruining the day that I started smoking cigarettes, loving to smoke cigarettes, and ruining the day that I that I, I couldn't ever quit. I, I don't know for a fact that I have quit, and that's why I haven't talked about it on the show, but I have uh, gone for... Uh, over a month without wanting to buy a pack of cigarettes. I then bought a pack of cigarettes as like a personal, like landmark test. Um, a, I did totally burn through that fucking pack in less than 48 hours. Uh, but B, uh, I didn't enjoy it as much. There was sort of like this hunger, like ah, I had been not experiencing a lot of cravings and stuff. But, uh, but yeah. So solidarity with anyone else out there in the world struggling with cigarettes and quitting on top of all this other bullshit going on. I feel your pain. L literally. And figuratively. And, and now is as good a time as any, if not a better time than ever before, to actually go ahead and really follow through. And commit to quitting, right? Public service announcement. Quit smoking cigarettes. Quit vaping, too. It's no good for you, folks. It's just no good for you. Um, everything we do is co-opted and corrupted by being toxic. Or by having been engaged in toxic, toxic stuff in its development. So, blah, blah, blah. But I digress. Toilet paper. Right. I was on a thing. It's also rambling on for too long. Time to wrap this segment up. Um, we should not take it for granted that uh, we may be being Pavlovianly trolled, right? Honestly, like given the fact how much else is going on out there in the world that's obviously like, well, that's some sort of weird agenda of trolling that's got funding behind it somewhere, somehow, right? There's there's enough evidence. And if you were to believe anybody in government, you know, the, the, the claim by the uh, uh, intelligence community continues to be, they're, they're still towing the line, Russia and other actors, as they like to call it, are out there pumping lots of misinformation. Never mind that the alphabet soup companies of our own uh, patriotic nation have often themselves been very much responsible for pumping out all kinds of nonsense and uh, could be accused of having arguably interfered with plenty of other countries' elections on their own right. Uh, it's not impossible that this crazy run on toilet paper was indeed something made manifest vis-a-vis -vis, uh, social media like influencing by creating, if there's a bunch of fake news troll accounts out there, it's, it's you know, I, and wouldn't it be weird if it turned out to be the case? Dun, dun, dun. I really need that queued up and ready to be pressed on a button. Mystery organ music. Um, okay, and let's say it's not. It is really weird and suspicious to me that, I mean, I didn't see huge raging surges of crowds at the stores. 
there's crazier surge buying, binge buying, radical impulse shopping on Black Friday nationwide than I've seen in the last three weeks. But suddenly there's no toilet paper. And okay, we probably could have, would have, I mean, I'm not saying that it's fake, right? I'm not. But I'm surprised that it isn't a conspiracy theory. And maybe someone's already out there crafting it. But maybe I'm the first to put it into words. But uh, more importantly, uh, why isn't there already 20 competing conspiracy theories about toilet paper if toilet paper is, if this run on toilet paper is some sort of psyop? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to come back and talk more about this in another segment. As always, friends, oh yeah, if we walk away with anything right now, we've got the time to organize a public discourse demand for toilet paper to be made out of hemp. Why? I don't know. I could have spent the last 50 minutes talking about all the reasons why. They should be effing obvious to you. Uh, old growth forests being turned into paper to wipe your ass with is not the best use of old growth forest, especially when we could be instead cycling hemp and cannabis through as super green food crops that can clothe, build. I mean, there's all the memes are out there already, right? I didn't even mean, need to make them. So I'll leave it with you. I'll leave it with you there, folks. Contemplate that. We really can right now, if nothing else, as we bounce back from all of this global shutdown pandemic craze, uh, take a moment to just like insist, hey, toilet paper industry, switch, make the switch now. And that is what I've got to say about that. As always, thank you kindly for listening. This has been the Almost Daily Zencast. With your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zappa. Until next time, may peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart.